Everyone, welcome. Terrific to connect with you. Congratulations on the new recording. I've always come at your music from the perspective of um, a broad electronic music fan, as opposed to specifically uh, a garage fan or a fan of any real specific subgenre of of the music. Are you conscious of that? Is that something that's that's on your mind when you're making music? Are you targeting an audience within a specific subgenre, or what's your goal? Um, I think that early on, I did tend to try and target people within the future garage niche, uh, just because I wanted to fit in and be a part of that community. But I've always been somebody who, um, you know, as you already know, like I come from like a hip hop background, right? I used to do a lot of hip hop production for people in the city. So like my tastes have always been a bit broader. And as a result, that's kind of bled into my work. And uh, I think that results in me targeting specific niches less and less as I continue on. And instead just focusing on making music that I think sounds cool and is relatable and has some sort of utility to it. Yeah, I think the result is that your work has at least the potential for a very, very broad appeal. I mean, it seems to me that what you do, um, those of my listeners who are interested in electronic music broadly are going to find all kinds of things in your music if they haven't heard it already. That's really exciting. Um, how much has your background as a producer contributed to that? Just simply your comfort level in the studio. Uh, greatly. I think it's it's a huge contributor. Um, just wanting to, uh, well, I think like so much of making music is kind of having like a big picture idea of what you want the song to be, right? And that's one of the uh, main aspects of being a producer, um, whether it's on a smaller scale and you're working just with one artist and kind of doing like the beat maker producer thing, or, you know, maybe working like, uh, for example, what's another producer like? A DJ Khaled, who's more like a and Ring things and putting things together and putting the right artists together to have these projects under his name come out. And, um, you know, that was a big part of how I approached uh, producing hip hop and rap with people. So I think I've just carried that with me as I continue to make electronic music. And I think it's uh, it's going to be a guiding approach for how I make music moving forward why not just stick with hip-hop <laughs> uh um a lot of reasons a lot of reasons some of which are kind of market related and some are i think more personal and a result of my specific experiences with uh, doing that and with the people that i would produce with you know on on the market side um, I think that uh, it's become a little bit stale, where it was a little bit stale, just sonically. Like, I remember in 2017, uh, I think around that time you had songs like Bad and Bougie come out and, like, a lot of these other, like, huge mega hits. And, you know, the stuff was great. It was great to play in the clubs, but, like, the stuff that I really loved growing up in hip hop was always the stuff that you would consider to be like a B-side, you know, like songs that wouldn't be uh, played in the club, but like you would sit at home or you'd, you'd attribute them to another moment and <clears throat> enjoy them that way, right? Um, one example that you and anybody listening to this can check out is like a song like uh, Keys Open Doors by The Clips. Like, you would never hear that beat in the club, ever, right? But it's phenomenal, it's weird, it's so out there. It's really like one of the more um, strange uh, productions that have come out of, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was just Pharrell who made that or if it was the Neptunes, but, um, you know, out of that camp. So it's like stuff like that I really wanted to make. And I found that 
um, I just couldn't really produce that, unfortunately. Like, uh, and I think part of that is, again, a result of how the genre itself was very focused on a very like trap trap sound. Um, a lot of influences from the South. You know, you had people like uh, Metro Boomin, who was starting to become popular around around that time. And um, part of it is also a result of, I think, a conservatism within Toronto, um, because our rap scene, which, I mean, who knows, maybe I'm uh, a bit too far out of the loop now, but to my knowledge, it's kind of dead, uh, aside from a few particular outliers. Um, our rap scene was very focused on uh, trying to emulate the US. So again, that results in there being no space for the weirder stuff. So I ended up just following my curiosities and ended up in uh, electronic music. You're talking about B-sides. Was dub music an influence for you? Uh, funnily enough, uh, no. No, this, this might sound kind of crazy, but like, I know that dub is very closely related to UK Garage. You know, there's definitely some some lineage there. But like I'd never really got heavily into dub specifically. Um whether it was me looking for influences or samples when I was making hip hop with people, or with regards to um UK Garage and Future Garage. I think now I, mean, I have a bit of uh, curiosity around it and I'm starting to explore more of the uh, genres related to it and that are kind of like in that uh, in that space but um, no, dub wasn't dub, dub hasn't been a huge influence on me but we'll see we'll see moving wow. forward I'm so surprised I, I hear it in your work so strongly. And I mean, perhaps you just absorbed it through other other outlets. Because of course it has been such an influential music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there by saying that I absorb it through other outlets, maybe like unknowingly, because I never really like sought out kind of the classic old school dub stuff. Um, and like offshoots, for example, like dubstep, everybody remembers the the uh, massive popularity that Skrillex had in the 2010s. Um, I was never into that stuff. I was never really into it. Um, but, you know, like, there's so much of Future Garage is pulling from that space. And, um, you know, you hear it in, like, Burial's music. You hear it in James Blake's music. And I'm a huge James Blake fan. Uh, so that bleeds into my work. And then you hear it in the music made by people who um, were sort of spawned by Burial. So like, for instance, artists like uh, Vacant, who's another electronic uh, UK garage, mostly future garage producer. Um, other affiliated producers like Sorrow and uh, Climax and just a lot of the people that you would find on like YouTube channels, like uh, Wave Visions, for example, back in the early days, I think now Wave Visions does a lot of like lo-fi house stuff, but like back in the, uh, I wanna say like 2013, all the way up to maybe 2018, 2019, it was largely just stuff that sounded like that. So that's where a lot of that comes from and how it bleeds into my work. I'm going to have a lot of listeners who are completely unfamiliar with a lot of the music you're describing. And so I'm wondering if you can give them a quick sort of one-on-one on, -one on a, the garage scene. You talked about UK, you talked about future garage. What do you want people to know about this music and why it's, it's touched you in the way it has? Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that, uh what's really touched me specifically more than anything else is like future garage and it's it's the fact that it's just so emotive 
right? Like the whole reason that I got into it and started trying to make music that sounded like it or that pulled from it was because at the time, uh, I think this was around like the mid 2010s, I was in a pretty rough place mentally, you know, a bit uh, distraught for sure. And that music was just so, it was dark and it was emotive and um, there was a warmth to it that was very comforting. Um, and it also, I think, was really appealing. And I think this is a huge appeal for most people as well, is the fact that it's it's unorthodox in the way that it uses its percussion, right? Like you already have the element of swing very present in UK garage, but um, future garage often takes it a step further with how uh, certain like uh, rhythms are syncopated or how there's certain like stop and start uh, aspects and stutter aspects to the drums. So um, I think that really was very appealing as somebody who, again, likes weirder stuff and is really drawn to weirder stuff. And I was like, wow, this this is music that shows me that we can do things that are a little further out of the box and that are uh, capable of, you know, we can make music that's capable of saying something without having like an artist do a full verse, chorus, verse uh, recording over the music itself. So yeah, it's it's just emotive, it's warm, it's a little bit weird at times. Um, yeah, just really, really great stuff. I love the way you've put that and the connection to swing um, is a very interesting takeaway. The So I came at the music just really from, from the perspective of someone who's interested in electronic music that's, you know, unconventional, sometimes even difficult. But the emotive piece of the genre, but also of what you do in particular, like if I think about a track like Embraced, that's a masterpiece. It is just gorgeous. And it is, to me, in a perfect world, that's what pop music would sound like. Do you want to create pop music or do you want to create music that is for a specific subset audience that's just interested in in you pushing boundaries? Um, that's a great question. And... Uh... Thank you so much for for the compliment on Embrace. Um, yeah, that's a really great question. I think as a producer, on some level, I do have an aspiration to make pop music at some point in my career, even if it's not necessarily necessarily like future garage influenced. Like, just to add it to my wheelhouse and uh, kind of prove my own competency to myself. I'd love to make kind of like generic pop music for the radio, like Ariana Grande type stuff. Um, I mean, probably make a hell of a lot of money off of that stuff too. But um, I think right now uh, I'm most interested in still making music that I find interesting and that I think is representative of like what I want to hear in the music landscape and that is a bit more left field. But um, I do also want to try and find a way to blow that music up and take it further, right? Um, because like I could just make Future Garage influenced electronic music for a small community but i think i just have like bigger ambitions in general you know uh, especially after the last few years because i think my dream was always to become a music producer who maybe wasn't necessarily like a superstar like maybe when i was a kid i was like i want to be like timbaland and 
and Scott Storch and, you know, people like that, like the super producers of the hip hop world. But um, I eventually realized that I just wanted to make music and be like a respected producer in my niche. And I feel like I've accomplished that. Uh, I've got enough press about that. Um, you know, I've been written about in several publications. I feel like I, I did that. So now I'm looking towards the future and I'm like, how do I make this bigger? I'd love to make what I'm doing right now bigger. So that's kind of what the goal is. And what you do has very much a global appeal. <clears throat> I think we're talking about a music that um, certainly has a bigger following outside of Canada than it does inside of Canada. Um, do you uh, do you ever think about leaving Toronto? Do you ever think about moving somewhere where you can be part of a a, a larger uh, a larger local scene? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have considered moving out of Toronto for music reasons. Um, because I think the Toronto scene in general. Like I spent a bit of time in it during the 2010s, uh, back when it was still a thing. I don't know what's happening now. Again, I'm probably pretty far out of the loop. But you know, back when I was producing for like the Hard to Kill guys and um, still doing a bit of like hip hop here and there, I was a part of that scene, and I feel like that scene has basically disintegrated. Um, largely for economic reasons, you know, affordability reasons. Um, so yeah, like I'd love to move to a place where I could perhaps be a part of a bigger scene and connect with more people and um, take things to a larger platform. Yeah, yeah, I think the potential is absolutely there. Let's talk about the new material. Uh, I have to ask you about the title, Revenge. Are we seeking revenge these days? <laughs> <laughs> um, I try not to. I try not to. Yeah. Um, the title of revenge. It's it's definitely. I think the feeling that drove the the conceptualization and production of this new project. But. Uh, I want to make it clear, like, it's not about inflicting harm on other people. It's just about how negativity and, you know, just like negative emotions, like resentment, frustration, anger, rage, stuff that we all feel when, you know, life kicks us real hard and you know, maybe kicks us when we're down, can culminate in the feeling of wanting to be vengeful, but then what I want people to do is actually like channel that into something productive, right? And um, I hope that it comes across on the project because this is still largely like an instrumental project, instrumental six tracks. There's not too many vocals on it. Um, probably the least amount of vocals of any of the EPs and LPs that I've ever put out actually. But, you know, if you listen through it, there's still a narrative present. There's still a story present. Um, you get that early on in the intro uh, of me supposedly going to seek revenge, starting up that car, and it has that explosive, like, beast-like ignition, and then, you know, like, hard cut into headhunters, again sounding like ooh, very very angry kind of violent but um ultimately the track headhunters is kind of like this i wanted it to represent the sound of that car as you go to seek that revenge and then at the end of headhunters you get this outro where i exit the vehicle just as headhunter stops right and it's me walking through uh kind of like a crowd um how i recorded that actually was i i walked down king street during like a summer night and just had my phone on record 
you know, as people were like hanging outside of bars. So I hope that, you know, helps to set the scene. And then I walk into a club that I'm not supposed to be in. And then the rest of the tracks are just kind of music. And that's supposed to represent me taking the frustration and anger that I felt in my life as a result of music things and as a result of like personal things with other people and trying to find what is uh, encompassed in track six, which is catharsis. So that's what I want people to understand about it. You know, revenge is about taking that anger and trying to do something productive and trying to find release from it. And in my case, it was finding release in making that project. This music has terrific potential to tell stories, doesn't it? With its emotional uh, content, both focally and otherwise, because there's there's just as much emotion in the music that you produce. The tension is just palpable. It's it's incredibly powerful. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's one of the things that I I loved about UK Garage and specifically uh, Future Garage. Right, it's it's not too heavy on vocals but there's still like so much of a narrative there that you can like construct yourself or you know even just listening to the way that the music moves and progresses so yeah i i agree like i think there is a lot of potential and i would love to you know going back to one of your previous points i would love to work with some more people to uh, try and help build up a scene around it and take it somewhere bigger, you know? Um, I mean, one of my goals right now as a musician who would like to make money off of my music, as most musicians do, is to get it into movies, right? I've been pursuing uh, synchronization opportunities for the past few years, like serious, taking it very seriously. And it's because like, I feel like it could work very well as an underscore for emotional moments, even just as a, like end credits music, you know, to like really hammer home the point of whatever the final scene is or what the point of like a movie or film is or a movie or a TV show is. Oh yeah. Are you conscious of the music being a reflection of our time, both in terms of, again, the emotion that it expresses, but also the, uh, your extensive use of technology uh, of of electronic sounds um, for me that is I have the sense that this is one of the musics that defines our our time. Hmm. Yeah, I think I am. I think I, I try to stay cognizant of that, um, especially during my production process, because could we have seen music? like this or like you know the music that's made by my influences like James Blake made several years ago probably not right as technology continues to advance and we begin to I think find tangible ways to answer and solve more and more of the hypotheses that we as like musicians and audio engineers have about you know can we do this can we do that can we accomplish, you know, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, whatever? Um, like we're going to continue to see music that just has even greater potential to tell stories or, or reflect the times that we're currently in. What's next for you? What's next for me? Um, so I'm thinking that. I've got this project, right? I'm going to focus on finishing the marketing and ads for Revenge, and you know, hopefully that goes well. Um, for me, I would like to put out another project in the first quarter of next year. Um, hopefully me saying that doesn't jinx it. Uh, it's probably going to be more of like a beat tape thing because um, you know, people go pretty long without hearing from me nowadays, but I don't want people to ever think that I'm not like writing or thinking about music. So 
I've got a bunch of ideas that have just like not fit on any projects um, that I've kind of left on the cutting room floor, but I feel good about them. So I'm going to probably try and package those and put them out next year, early next year. And then um, I'm still trying to figure out like what exactly my priorities are going to be after that project, because I do have a third LP in mind that I've already started chipping away at it. Um, it's going to be very different um, from my past work. Um, probably closer to like singer songwriter stuff, I think. So, you know, definitely expanding the musical palette for myself and for listeners. And then also, I think just continuing to focus on trying to get my music into different media properties and maybe finding some trustworthy people to work with. You know, I've had the fortune of meeting some very, very talented musicians over the past few years, some great singers, uh, some great producers. So hopefully some more collabs. I would like to get back into collaborating with other people actively. Thanks for this. And congratulations again.